Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be talking to you about partial venia crown preparation. So partial venia crown preparation actually means as the name suggests that the tooth is partially prepared and you are preserving uh, the tooth. By partially preparing the tooth, you are preserving uh, at least one surface of the tooth. So this is type of a preparation in which at least one surface is left intact that is you are not preparing that and rest of the other surfaces are prepared uh, to accept the uh, partial veneer crown. So anterior partial veneer crown were first developed by J.P. Carmichael in 1901 and in this the label surface of the tooth uh, was left intact and rest of the other surfaces were prepared. So it was on the canine uh, they, he prepared all the surfaces uh, lingual only the label surface was left intact that is the uh, front surface was left intact and rest all the surfaces were prepared to, ex to accept uh, partial veneer crown restoration. Now partial veneer crowns cannot be indicated in all patients and all type of teeth uh, there are indications for that and also there are contraindications so you have to be careful uh, when you are selecting the patient that is very critical for the success of the restoration. Now let us find out what are the indications of partial venia crowns. Partial venia crowns are indicated in a healthy tooth which is having adequate crown length and when you are having intact label surface which does not require any contour modification. So you have to have a intact label surface and uh, there should be a healthy tooth surface. Another thing is patient should uh, have good oral hygiene. So these are all the indications when you are selecting the patient. The contraindications are uh, in short teeth you should not use partial venia crown or in a non vital teeth yes because the teeth are already weak so chances of fracture is there. So in those cases also you should give a full venia crown preparation rather than a partial venia. Another thing is where the patient is having high caries index or you have cervical caries uh, which have undermined the teeth. So if you have caries in this region where it is extending subgingivally, so in those cases you should not give partial venia crown. And of course if you are having an extensive destruction or decalcification of the teeth then also partial venia crown should not be given. So there are uh, clear advantages of giving a partial venia crown the foremost is it is preserving the tooth structure and it has ease in cleansability of the margins for the patient as one of the tooth surface is left intact there is complete seating of the restoration which can be verified because there are a number of features which are given in a partial venia crowns which help in seating of the uh, restoration another thing is it has good seating as well as it provides easy escape of the uh, for the cement unlike if you are having in a full veneer crown uh, wherein when you are cementing the crown it uh, the high viscosity of the dental cement uh, interferes when you are uh, cementing when it, it applies kind of an hydraulic effect and uh, it resists placement of the uh, crown. So here in this case partial veneer crown preparation it is easy it allows easy escape of the cement so that is good thing and electrical uh, electric vitality testing is possible because one of the surface that is uh, if you talk about the anterior partial veneer crown the label surface is left intact. The drawbacks is it is less it is having less retention and resistance than the complete veneer crown that is definitely there. A limited adjustment of the path of removal is possible uh, and a display of metal is possible in the incisal region. So of course aesthetic is one concern if you are talking about the anterior partial veneer crown. Now let us look what are the steps involved in partial veneer crown preparation. The first step is the lingual reduction and how do you do lingual reduction that is uh, the single limb reduction. Uh, both the, uh, the surfaces of the canine, in this case we are taking a canine for accepting the uh, partial renia crown. So the first thing is you are reducing the singulum and both the surfaces of the canines you are going to prepare by using a 
uh, wheel shaped diamond burr and you are going to do a concave cingulum reduction with the clearance of around 0.75 uh, millimeters. You can also give a uh, depth orientation grooves uh, on the lingual surface which will ensure that you reduced uniformly on the entire surface. So lingual reduction is done in two planes. If you see this is the cingulum reduction you are going to do and then you are going to do the lingual axial reduction. This is done with the help of the wheel shaped diamond burr and this is done with the help of a torpedo burr. Now let us see how do we do the preparation. So you are going to use uh, your wheel shaped burr and you are going to make depressions, two concave depressions on the cingulum area like this. So by using uh, your wheel shaped diamond burr you are going to make two cingulum depressions here on both the sides of the ridge and you are going to do approximately 0.7 uh, millimeters of reduction for the occlusal clearance. Next you are going to do a lingual axial reduction. This is by using a torpedo diamond burr. So you are going to use a torpedo diamond burr as you can see here and you are going to keep your hands straight and stable and then you are going to move like this and this is how you have to make a vertically parallel wall uh, so as to provide a good retention and resistance form. So you are going to prepare this like this moving from one end to another end but not touching the adjacent teeth. Always make sure that you don't bend the bird like this towards the tooth surface or away from the tooth surface because in both ways either you will you will be over reducing the tooth or you will be creating an undercut. So both we don't want. Keep the bird keep your hands stable, keep the burr straight and then make a vertical lingual wall. So here we have a vertically vertical lingual wall and that is made by the torpedo diamond and here if you see you have a chamfer finish line. So that will automatically be there because you are using a torpedo diamond so you will create a chamfer finish line here. So this enhances your retention and resistance form by keeping the wall vertical. Another thing is if you have a short crown, suppose the tooth is small although it is contraindicated but still if you are doing a partial veneer crown, uh, if all uh, it is meeting the rest all parameters then in those cases to increase uh, the retention you can give a cingulum pin or you can um, give a beveled shoulder finish line here so as to increase the retention. Next we are going to do an incisal reduction and how do we do incisal reduction? This is the incisal uh, plane and you are going to use uh, your wheel diamond burr and you are going to go along the incisal edge of the tooth surface like this, along the incisal edge like this, along the contours of the incisal edge. And also you are going to follow the uh, mesial and distal inclines. Also you are going to follow the mesial and distal inclines and you are going to reduce around 0.7 millimeters. So you are going to go like this and on the distal incline and like this on the mesial incline. So your reduction will be like this as you see and one thing which we have to keep in mind is that you are not going to touch the labio incisal wall like this so that your metal does not display on the other side otherwise it will give an anesthetic look. Next we go move on to the proximal axial reduction and how do we do that? You are going to take a needle thin tapered fissure burr and then you are going to go in a to and fro motion like this. So you are going to use a needle thin tapered fissure burr like this and you are going to go in a sweeping motion to and fro inside outside inside outside you have to make sure that you uh, will not be touching the adjacent tooth always keep your burr on the surface of the tooth which you are preparing never touch this and you are going to go all the way till the uh, till the contact area and you will uh, make the tooth thin and you can use an enamel hatchet to break the contact always make sure that you don't contact the adjacent tooth on both the sides 
also you will be keeping the burr parallel to the incisal two third. You will be keeping the burr parallel to the incisal two third of the labial surface, and that's how you are going to do the reduction. Once you have done the uh, proximal axial reduction, you can extend uh, your chamfer finish line by using a torpedo diamond, and that is how you are going to finish your uh, your preparation of the axial surface. Next important step is to give a proximal groove by using a number one seventy L burr. That that's how you are going to go. You are going to go straight parallel to the incisal two third of the tooth. And you're going to go straight into this. Make sure that your burr is not going to penetrate or make the label surface thin. So you're going to go right away. You're going to go parallel to the surface on both the sides, and you're going to create a proximal groove. At the same time, what you have to uh, make sure is that you stop at least 0.5 millimeter uh, above the. Finish line. That is the chamfer finish line which you have given. You should stop at least 0.5 millimeters above the finish line. So that's how you are going to create a proximal grooves here. Once you have made the uh, proximal grooves like this, like this, then you are going to give another important feature that is the proximal flare. So only on the uh, the incisal edge, what you are going to do, you will extend the burr more uh, towards the the midline. On both the sides, so you are going to give a flare. Now let us see how to do the proximal flare. You are going to use the same number 170 L burr, and you are going to just tilt the burr uh, towards the midline, and you are going to just give a flare here in the incisal edge region. You can also use a flame-shaped uh, carbide burr, and that is how you are going to give the proximal uh, flare here. You are just going to slightly tilt this bird in the in the towards the midline, and then you are going to get, create a flare on this incisal surface. Next step is uh, to make incisal offset. Now, when you are making an incisal offset, you can either draw uh, how to make an uh, incisal offset. So, on the incisal edge, what you are going to do, you are going to use your um, your number one seventy L bird. And then you are going to make an inverted V groove, V-shaped groove, uh, which is join, which will be joining the proximal flare uh, on one aspect to another aspect. That is, which will be joining the uh, proximal flare on the distal aspect to the mesial aspect. So that is how you are going to do. You have to make sure um, your distance, that is, this entire distance, which is the incisal edge, uh, you are having at least two third of that. On the towards the label side and one third on the lingual aspect. So that's how you're going to create this. You can alternately we use uh, an inverted cone uh, burr also in order to create an incisal offset. So we are going to keep the burr like this, and we are going to you we are going to make a inverted V uh, with the help of this burr. This edge which you see of the burr is going to create an inverted V-shaped uh, V-shaped offset, and it will be joining both the proximal groove on the either side. That is on the distal to the mesial, as I just uh, told you. So, if you see carefully, you have uh, the incisal offset here, which is joining the proximal groove, and you have the entire preparation in front of you. Now another uh, step which is left is by uh, you are giving you have to give a labio incisal uh, bevel that is you are going to give a bevel here and here how you are going to do you are going to take a tapered fissure burr and you are just going to keep the burr uh, perpendicular to the incisal two third and just give a small thin bevel. So you are just keep going to keep the burr. Like this, perpendicular to the path of insertion, and you're going to prepare this around 0.5 millimeters, or and you're going to give a labial incisal bevel. That's how that's how you're going to give the labial incisal bevel. Also, you can give a contra contra bevel also uh, on the distal inclines of the canine, uh, but this should be avoided uh, when you are giving in the incisors because of the aesthetic obvious aesthetic reasons. 
once you have completed the preparation you can do the finishing and polishing procedure in order to give a smooth the angle should not be sharp anywhere and you should have a smooth uh, smooth finish you can have a smooth finish in the finish line so to summarize uh, we can see the features uh, here on the uh, on the prepared partial vena crown uh, which you see so finally to summarize uh, the preparation we have the lingual reduction which gives you the structural durability here and when we do the axial reduction that gives the improves the resistance and retention form and also gives the structural durability and it preserves the periodontium because the finish line which you are giving is super gingival uh, the proximal flare which you give here like I showed you there in the preparation with the proximal groove on the axial uh, preparation and then you had the proximal flare uh, that that gives the marginal integrity incisal offset which you uh, see when we are giving the v-shaped groove that gives you these ex, ex, the uh, structural durability it increases the amount of material um, in this area so it is improving the structural durability the proximal grooves which we had given will improve the uh, retention and resistance form and also provide you structural durability and the chamfer finish line which we have given on the uh, lingual surface is going to give you the marginal integrity and going to preserve the periodontium. So, so this is in short about the partial vena crown preparation. Thank you for watching the video.